We have shown that in the last in the last games we have shown them that we definitely uh, had the capability of recovering between games uh, very well, and that comes through fitness. When you have a, not a good fitness, you can't recover between games. So, and my players now recovering quicker. Uh, now we had even a good week where we could mentally and physically prepare ourselves now for for what we, what I call uh, we need to have a top performance. We don't get away with. The average one or a good one to get the result there. So we need a top performance, and when we can achieve that, and I think all basic foundations are there to achieve it, then we have a good chance to win the game. How do you teach concentration to players? I mean, I know if, you, if you're not fit, then you'll lose concentration. I appreciate Earlier that. On, yeah. Earlier on, But how do you teach concentration? What methods do you use? I think um, concentration. I think this is um, um, is it, it starts in the everyday. Every day you're coming to work starts with you have to realize uh, when is working time, when is downtime, when is recovery time. Every time we work, we need to have the concentration levels high. Um, that is what I'm, what I'm teaching every single day or demanding for my players every single day. That also goes through, for example, video sessions. You know, sometimes you're going. You can't do all the work on the on the pitch because of the physical demands of the championship. So you have to have sessions in the video room, and that is sometimes hard to be focused, to stay focused, and keep concentration. And we have to make sure that those sessions can't be too long—10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. And but there you learn to stay focused, to stay sharp, to to uh, to understand visually what you have to put into practice so certain certain ways certain people learning different or keeping concentration differently and you have to find what sort of learner you have on another side and as for the game itself you have Lewis Cook available um, and yeah. I mean he's, he's so talented he could probably go into any team at the moment at mm -hmm. this stage um, but whether you pick him or not though and um, anyway, you have shown that you've changed the way you've played a little bit this season whether you have Antonucci and would say and maybe a four in midfield if you want to call it that or a four three three can Cook play anywhere at any in any in any formation or could all your players play in any formation I think we have been pretty consistent in the way we prepared the team in a four three three we played one half three five two not to my satisfaction and we never did it again uh, since that we've completely focused on 4-3-3 and due to the fact that Mirko Antonucci had been in, in good shape in training and he took that into the game against Burnley when he came on and then we felt against against Bristol was the right thing to start with two strikers and we did the same thing again again uh, against Sheffield Wednesday uh, uh, my players have shown tactically flexibility between the 4-3-3 and the 4-4-2 and um, so I have we have a plan A and we also have a plan B and uh, and I think that is the modern way of football um, is only is only very few clubs in the world like Barcelona like Bayern Munich they they completely only play one way and their way there is always a just most of the clubs having minor adjustments from game to game without losing their continuity and what they're doing. And how much of Plan A is Luke Murphy this weekend? Um, Luke Murphy is ahead of schedule. Uh, we all thought that uh, going through the international weekend afterwards he will be ready to uh, to start games before he was already through the, through the suspension of of Cookie, he was already needed to, to to be part of our squad, and he did that very well. I think when he came on against Sheffield Wednesday, he gave us a better balance in the team. Him and Alex Mord, uh, also uh, uh, a more structured way. Uh, and that is no criticism to the guys who came off. It was just the fact that those two brought that on the table, and they did very well. He's definitely in in uh, in. Uh, Considerations is that the mm -hmm. right word? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to 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 start. Will he start? I can't tell you now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but he's definitely very very close. And is there anybody that will not be starting that through injury that you could say? Where are you happy? Mm -hmm. No, no. Um, 
be coming through that period without uh, injuries. I'm, 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 I'm delighted. So now we're going into that last heavy game uh, with having basically no injuries apart from Tommy Bianchi. He's still not ready for selection. How far away is it now, Uwe, would you say? Um, he, Luke Murphy was ahead of schedule. I think Tommy is right on schedule okay. um, so far. Okay. And with that, would you, think you expect to see him in full training? I think I can't. I, can't uh, I think uh, I have not spoken exactly about when he will return. But the only thing what I, with the daily conversation I have with the medical uh, department, is that he is right on schedule. Okay. Thanks for that. How pleased will you be when the loan, uh, when the transfer window closes on Tuesday? Yeah, you have to ask me on Monday or <laughs> Tuesday. Because so you're hoping to answer the squad before. I mean, then. Every, every, I mean yeah. it's every manager or every head coach uh, wish to get this one special player or two special players who make your team stronger. Um, I knew that behind the scenes the club is working hard, and mm -hmm. that is I can only repeat myself. But there is no guarantee, and I repeat that there is no guarantee that one or two or three players coming in. I hope we can bring quality into the club, add quality to the right price. Um, but I can't guarantee you that. And, and, and so far, um, I only can say they're working very hard. And yes, we're trying certain things. But where we are exactly, I can't tell you at the moment. Uh, you know, I respect that you're not going to mention names um, at all, but um, do you find it better working like this, where you're maybe not so involved in negotiations yeah. than you did yeah. before? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a similar model how I worked um, in Brentford. In Brentford, um, obviously, I was involved um, very much to identify the targets, um, and then, but in everything in terms of negotiation, um, uh, yeah negotiation with clubs, with agents, with players. I wasn't involved and I don't want to be involved. Uh, obviously the final word was always on my side in Brentford. Um, here is it, uh, is it uh, slightly different, I think, in terms of identifying, identifying the player. I'd be involved, but maybe not as heavily as I was in, in Brentford. Uh, but again, here, negotiation with players, agents, uh, clubs, I'm not involved and I'm very happy to not be involved in that.